All right, so welcome to the video on the introduction to annuity. So this is lesson number one. Let's go. All right, okay, so what I would want you to know if you finish this video is hopefully to know the difference between an ordinary annuity and an annuity due. Without any kind of calculations per se, just to know what the difference between those two are. Now, once you understand that difference, I would want you to know the difference between a simple annuity and a general annuity. And you see that in here with the actual kind of simple and general. And you see that again, simple and general right there. So those are the two key things that I would want you to take out of the video. And I'm gonna go through some terminology as well to try to help you understand annuities. So annuities in general, so I have this uh, prepared okay, writing here. So annuity is basically a set of equal payments at regular intervals. And those payments can be paying off your car loan, paying off even your mortgage, okay, if it's exactly the same amount, um, or it can be paying off you know, for your favorite toy if you're paying off some credit card or something like that. Now, the key thing is they have to be equal. So we're gonna be assuming that they're equal payments and they have to be spaced out at regular intervals. All right, so I have two things here so that you see. Okay, so basically there's a timeline and you can make the assumption that these are payments, all right? So we have one, two, three, and four payments. And then at the bottom timeline, so these are also payments. So notice in both cases, we have four payments. Now they could go on you know, for as many payments as you like. Let's keep them at four at the moment. So the first concept that I would want you to understand is the difference between an ordinary annuity and then an annuity due. And that difference is dependent on when you're making the payments. So in our first example, so in this example at the top, so I'm gonna call this example number one, and then this example number two, you notice that you have a payment and at equal intervals, and I'm going to mark this. So this is the period of the actual payment interval. And notice they are identical at the top at the bottom. All right, so that's what we have there. Now there is a difference because in example number one, the payment is at the end of the interval. And in example number two, the payment is right at the start of the interval. And that is what actually distinguishes an ordinary annuity from an annuity due. So if the payment is at the end of the interval, then we call it an ordinary annuity. So that's what you have there. And if the payment is at the start of the interval, then we call it an annuity due. So there you have it. So now you understand the difference between an ordinary annuity and an annuity due. And the only change between them is when you make the payment. Is it at the end of the interval or is it in the beginning of the interval? All right. So that's the first thing I wanted to explain to you. Now, the next item that I wanna explain is, okay, this payment interval that we have, and I have highlighted this here in orange that you see here, so there's different pay, payment intervals. Now, right beside it, you have this P slash Y. So I wanna explain what that is first. So in your payments, as you're going along, and you're making your payments throughout, so you have these annuities, okay? So they are at equal intervals spaced out. Now, those payments, what we typically would like to know is how many payments, so, and this is basically that. So it is how many payments that you have, so how many payments that you have that's the P per year, per one year. And that will, of course, depend on, well, how many payments you are making within one year. 
If you're making the payments once per month, then you're going to have 12 payments. If you're making payments once per quarter, then you're gonna have four payments in a year. If you're making payments every week, you're gonna have 52 payments and so on. So this particular term that we have right there, so that payments per year is super useful to know. Now, the other concept I wanna to explain to you is as you're going through here, so in green, I'm gonna blow this up a little bit. If you go back and start thinking about compounding, and for compounding, I'll provide a link for anyone who wants to know. I did a full out lesson plan for all the compounding and you should know it. So I will assume that you have gone through that. And in this case, so what you see in green, it says compounding frequency, or in other words, your conversion period. So you have this C slash Y. So I wanna explain what that means with regards to compounding. So what we had right here was we said, how many payments are there in one year, right? And we call that P slash Y. Now, the other thing that we wanna also know is because these payments are part of a compounding um, process that we do. And you may recall, you can compound at different time intervals. So you can compound quarterly, you can compound monthly, you can compound annually, right and so on so again if you don't remember that you can take a look okay at the link that i provided just before with regards to okay the compounding session and then i will also put it up in the show notes okay below okay if you wanted to know now this compounding frequency so that we have and this term so compounding frequency. So how often are you compounding will actually also tell us how many compounding periods do we have in one year. So we can ask the question, how many compounding periods are there in one year and that so again I'm gonna highlight here so compounding periods okay in one year and that is exactly okay what the C slash Y stands for so that is how many compounding periods do you have in a year so how often are you compounding your money so if you're going to be compounding monthly well then it's going to be 12. If you're gonna be compounding quarterly, then C slash Y is going to be four. If you're compounding annually, then it's basically one because it's just once per year, all right? So now that we know these two things, which is the number of payments per year and the number, number of compounding periods per year, now we can ask, okay, and answer the question, what is the difference between a simple annuity and a general annuity. So it turns out that what you have is when you are referring to a simple annuity, so a simple annuity, it turns out that your number of payments per year will be equal to the number of compounding periods per year. And an example of this would be that, for example, you're making your payments once per month. So every single month you're going to be making a payment and you're also compounding once per month. So you're compounding monthly. So if your periods of payments are monthly and your compounding frequency is also monthly, then these two will be equal and that's a simple annuity. If you're going to be making payments every single quarter and you're compounding every single quarter, then that's a simple annuity because they align. Now, if they do not align, so in this case, if they do not align, 
what we have is we have a general annuity. So a general annuity, what happens is that your payments that you're making will not align with your compounding frequency that you have. So for example, you could be making payments every single month, but the actual compounding happens every quarter. So these are not going to be equal. So if you're paying payments per month, you would have 12 payments in a year. That's what you would have here. But if you were compounding quarterly, well, then you would have four compounding periods per a year and notice that these don't equal. And that is referred to as a general annuity. So that's really the only difference between simple and general. So now if I scroll back up, now you know all the different terms with regards to annuities, at least for the introduction. So you have the difference, an ordinary annuity and an annuity due. So ordinary meant that you are making payments at the end of each period. And an annuity due means that you were making the payments in the beginning of the period. And the difference between simple and general means simple, your number of payments that you have per year aligns with the compounding frequency that you have per year. In general, they do not align. So that's what we have there. Now, there are still a few things that are remaining here in terms of def definitions. So we explained the payment interval. So it's the amount of time that you have. So in this case, the payment interval is what you see there okay, in orange. Okay, so those would be your payment intervals. We explained what payments per year is. Now, the periodic payment, or sometimes referred to as rent, that is exactly what you saw in these. So that is the amount of money that you are actually paying as your payment. So your payments maybe are, let's say, $1,000 per month. If it's something bigger that you are maybe purchasing or putting away for. So that would be your rent, okay, or your periodic payment. The term of the annuity, which is the next item that you see there. So we had explained this, this, and now your term of the annuity. The term of the annuity is actually pretty simple. The term is the entire time that you have. Let me erase this here and let me use a different color. So the term would be your entire time of your annuity. So in this case, if we had four payments, that would be the term. So it's the length of time that you have for your entire annuity. That's your term of annuity. And that explains all the different terms. And now you've introduced yourself to annuities. And hopefully with this video, you can now actually take some real examples, which I'm going to do in future videos. And we're going to be tackling how to solve these annuities. And what I encourage every single person watching this is that before you do this, I really want you to understand equivalent values. And I'm going to do a link okay, to equivalent values with regards to compounding because that's exactly what annuities are. It is just a matter of shifting money to a focal date that you want to see, either the future value or present value or something else. All right? Okay. So in summary, so what we have okay, is we've presented annuities. So annuities are equal payments at equal intervals of time. All right. And now the question that we ask ourselves is, do we have an ordinary annuity? Do we have an ordinary annuity? Or do we have an annuity due? Okay. That was the first question. Well, what makes it an ordinary annuity? What makes it is that the payment is at the end of the term. And if the payment is at the start of the term, then that's an annuity due. From there, what we did was we answered the question, well, is it going to be a simple annuity or is it going to be a general annuity? And that we can answer for both. So I can take this and I can copy it. Okay, so that's exactly for both. 
And what was the difference between simple and general? Well, the difference was that in simple, your payments per year were equal to your compounding frequency per year. That's what happened. But in general annuities, these two things do not align. So your payments per year do not align with your compounding periods per year. And that's the same thing that you had right here. All right, so thank you for watching. I hope that you found this video useful. Hopefully you can hit a like and subscribe and we'll see you in future videos. Bye, everybody.